Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be continuing my Don't Starve series. In the last episode, I talked about Wolfgang and Wendy. Now I'm going on to WX78 and Wickerbottom, the librarian. Alright, the first character on this list is WX78. His perks and quirks are he can upgrade of circuits instead of gears, which I'll explain that in a minute. He's not a picky eater, so he can eat stale and spoiled food just fine. And he's charged by lightning but damaged by water. So he'll take damage when he's wet, but he can get charged when he gets struck by lightning, which makes him go faster. His build day, meaning birthday, is November 28th, and his favorite food is a butter muffin. His, he enters the constant with a little robot scanner that he named Jimmy, and some circuit priors, I believe is what they're called, which I'll show you all what those do in a minute. He has 125 HP and hunger, and 150 sanity, so 50 less sanity than a normal character. But anyways, if we're going into his story, basically, WX78 wasn't always a robot, he was actually a person. Upon him and Wagstaff, the character the player finds in the quest to beat Celestial Champion, they find out this Wagstaff character. He doesn't talk about WX78 in front of the player, however, if you look at WX78's animated short, you can obviously see that it's him. Basically, WX78 was a person, he got experimented on, and now he's a robot, and now he's really mad at Wagstaff, and just about everything. If y'all look at the screen right there, you can see just a bunch of little 1010s on the bottom of the screen. That's like a, almost like their way of cutting the rest of the conversation to make it more mysterious. Anyways, now we're on to Wickerbottom, the librarian. Her perks and quirks are, she knows many things, so basically she can craft um, a spear or a shovel, like basically science machine crafts without needing an actual science machine. And I think some of the alchemy engine crafts she can do as well. She can also, she also self-publishes books. You can craft them in the game for different abilities. She also um, cannot sleep, just in general, and she can't be put to sleep. It also says on there that she has a delicate stomach, but I'm pretty sure it just means she, wasn't, she won't eat spoiled food because that's what it said in the old um, version of her game. Well, by that I mean of Don't Starve, because this is Don't Starve Together when all the characters have been updated. Her birthday is December 6th, and her favorite food is Surf and Turf. She enters the constant with two pa pieces of paper, and yeah, that's actually it. She also has 125 health, 150 hunger, and 250 sanity, so 50 more sanity than a normal character. Now going into her story, Basically, one day when she was locking up the library, a shadow enemy she noticed was going behind some of the bookcases. It was just walking around back there. Upon examining it, she knew what she had to do. She went down into a secret library that she had. Using a necklace around her neck, she opened a secret door behind one of the bookshelves and made it to the secret library. After studying the enemy, there was a fire that started upstairs by... Let me show y'all. Willow, if y'all remember this character... She was actually the one who started the fire for the library. I mean, you can look, if you look, I don't know if you can not see, but she's literally holding a match in the uh, picture that it shows on screen for her. The librarian was starting to put out the fire with a fire hose that she had in one of the broom closets. Then a figure in the distance appeared, which promised her a way to save all the knowledge, meaning all the books. Upon opening a portal, she tries pushing one of the shelves into it. He then goes on to say that's not what he had in mind, and then throws her into the portal, sending her into the constant. That figure is actually Maxwell, and I'll go more into his storyline when it's his actual video, but basically he's the one who took most of the survivors into the constant. Alright, now I'm going to head out into the game and continue to show y'all the rest of their abilities. Alright, now I've loaded into the game. As y'all can see, I've made even more improvements, although that's not what the video is about. Anyways. Basically, when you load into the game, well, when you first go on, you have a circuit extractor and a robot named Jimmy, which you can place him down to deploy him, which he'll start trying to look for things that he can scan. Upon scanning certain things, he can learn new crafting recipes, so that's basically how that works. Y'all can't see it on camera because of the position I have. I don't have like an official tripod set up. I'm just using some stacked stuff off camera to get the camera just right. But if y'all if y'all are playing the actual game, you'll look to the right of the screen. You'll see this um, 
what looks like a robotic part on the side of the screen underneath your HP, which basically you can plug circuits into there, which if y'all look at my crafting menu, there's actually a lot of circuits in this game. You can also recraft the circuit extractor in case you lose it and Jimmy. I just call it Jimmy because that's the actual name, as if I place it down and WX examines it, he'll say his name is Jimmy. And upon examining it while it's not activated, he'll say he is in rest mode, classic Jimmy, which is just kind of funny. Anyways, you can recraft these things in case you lose them. Or if you want to have multiple Jimmys to get multiple scans. Alright, if you all go to a lightning rod, you can click charge at, but it has to be charged after it got struck by lightning, so really only works during spring. So, it's kind of unfortunate. Anyways. He also has... He also gets damaged by water. So, if you're, let's say, sailing and need to abandon your ship by jumping off of it, it would not be a good idea as this character, because when he gets back on land, he'll be, like, with little to no HP. So just keep that in mind. He can also eat stale and spoiled food just fine. Like, I have a stale carrot in my fridge. If I eat it, he'll say, stale food is just as good. Because he doesn't care. And I'll be wondering what this means is basically if you have stale food it restores less hunger but um for this character he kind of ignores that. So basically food when it's stale and spoiled has less benefit and makes you lose sanity. So basically this character can eat stale and spoiled food without any problem because he's a robot and he doesn't know what act anything actually tastes like. All right. Now we're on to his circuits. I had to do a bunch of off-camera research on all of these, so you're welcome. Anyways, hardy circuit. There's a hardy circuit and a super hardy circuit, which when you plug them into the section on the right of the screen, like I mentioned earlier, which you just tap plug in. Actually, I actually have a circuit to show y'all what I mean. Here we go. Forgive me the, if there's a lot of background noise. It's because it's raining in real life currently. Alright, now I'll show y'all the acceleration circuit. This is just an example, all the circuits work like this. If I click plug in, my character now has it plugged in, which the one I have equipped it right now increases my speed by 25%. He says there's something on the screen I need to scan, but I'm not too sure what exactly. Anyways, oh yeah, now the speed boost actually works. As you all saw, he said systems fully restored. If he unplugs the circuit that is inside of him, he'll have to wait a little while be before he can use another one. Well, for the actual ability to work. It's a little hard to explain, but, um, yeah. Alright. Now that I kind of have all this stuff inside, now I'll explain all of these. Basically, hardy circuit and the super hardy circuit allow you to have more HP. Which, this is what I meant by circuit upgrades. Because in the old game, he used to be able to just eat gears and he'd get, like, a ton of stats and new upgrades. Then there's the processing circuit and super processing circuit, which allow him to get more sanity to his maximum. Bean booster circuit allows him to restore health and sanity over time. It also gives him 100 additional sanity, which is the effect of the super processing circuit. There's also the cores box circuit, which allows him to play a little song whenever he walks around. It gives him some sanity and allows him to take care of his plants instantly. What I mean by this is if you tap, um, let me plant a seed, if it's in the ground, I have to tap A to talk to him each time. Basically, it does this automatically for the player. Alright, the next one is the two, these two, I forgot the names. Basically, what they allow the player to do is they give them extra hunger, so your basically your maximum hunger is increased. The acceleration circuit, which is the one I have currently, increases your speed by 25%. The super acceleration circuit does not give you more speed, but instead it's smaller because just one acceleration circuit by itself takes up all your space. Because you can fit multiple circuits into your character, but there's limited space. But basically this just allows you to carry more speed, which the speed effect will stack. Now the thermal circuit. This one will make the player warmer during winter, but it has a downside. If there's food inside the player's inventory, it'll rot faster, so you have to keep that in mind. And also the player will dry off 10% faster when they get wet, which is actually pretty helpful because the player, if y'all remember from earlier, takes damage from water. The refrigerant circuit does the opposite. It allows the player to be cooler, which is good for summer. It also allows the player to, when the player has food in their inventory, 
the food will actually spoil less fast. So it's like being a portable refrigerator, basically. And if the character reaches 95% wetness, which is actually bad for this character, it'll get turned to zero wetness and you'll get two ice because it freezes. And then there's also the electrification circuit, which allows you to do electric damage to enemies. There's this one, I forgot the name, but basically it's like wearing the moggles. If y'all don't know what that is, basically it's like a night vision kind of thing. It gives the player like a strange night vision that works in the caves. This actually just makes it so you can see permanently. This next one, the illumination circuit's like the last one, however it doesn't have as much range. But anyways, that's pretty much all WX78's circuits that I wanted to mention. Something else to mention is that WX78, because of its acceleration circuit, can be useful some, for some of the other events, such as, I had them written down here. He can catch up to the gingerbread pigs faster if you're trying to grind the gingerbread houses for the Christmas event. I actually have a few of them down here so I can show y'all what the gingerbread houses look like. If you hammer these down, you can get holiday cheer and you can cook holiday meals with it. But I just have the event enabled right now so that way I can give y'all a good demonstration. Another good event to use him for is the Pig King event, where if he's um doing the Pig King wrestling match, he can run away from the enemies faster. Because it's like, basically how that game works is there's four pigmen who run around smacking each other with signs, but they typically always target the player. They're faster than the player and attack really fast. Your main goal is just try to get a bunch of gold. But basically being able to run away faster is a good advantage. For Year of the Cat Coon, I mean, he can be somewhat good if he's trying to follow the big cat coon that you spawn through the actual event. But I mean, basically his speed's pretty much good for every event. My personal best use for this character is probably going around exploring the maps, mainly because, once again, because of his acceleration circuit, it's basically like his best ability. But this character, as y'all may have seen right now, does not have a skill tree. So instead, I'll talk about my ideas for a skill tree. A good skill I think that they should add for Jimmy, WX78's robot, is like an ability to scan creatures faster, because trying to scan something like a butterfly can take forever, because the butterfly is always moving around and it gets scared of other creatures, so it's just hard to scan things. So I think a faster scan would be a good ability. Another one would be, if y'all remember me talking about earlier, on the right of the screen, there's those circuits. I think more circuit space could be a good idea, but it could, be, it could either be too powerful or not good enough. I wouldn't doubt for the affinity side that they give him a circuit that allows him to do more damage to lunar and shadow enemies. I mean, that's probably like the most logical kind of thing that they'd give him. But anyways, that's just my theory and ideas for the WX skill tree. Alright, now I'm going to move on to the next character. Alright, now for the next character, Wickerbottom. This character, like I mentioned, self-publishes books, but I'll get to that in a moment. Basically, one of her disadvantages is, and I kind of get that over with, is that she cannot sleep. So, basically... She'll have a ex different excuse for each time you want to sleep. Like, if you try sleeping in a sleeping bag, she'll say that she's, quote, not going to sleep on the ground. Other than that, I don't think she has any other disadvantages, so she's overall a really good character. Alright, now I'm going to talk to you all about the character and all her items. The paper she st starts with, any player can craft it. It's just that she has a small advantage of being able to craft one of her easier books with having two pa pieces of paper. Alright. Now, using the Shadow Machine, she can craft one book, which I'm just going to get this one knocked out, it is called The End is an Eye. Basically, this book allows her to spawn a bunch of lightning around her, which can damage enemies, or charge up lightning rods, or even charge up WX-78, the last character I was showing y'all right now. So, in a way, her and him can make a good character combo. Alright, with that done, I forgot to mention that she can craft the bookcase, which is the structure I'm standing next to. It actually works like an alchemy engine, so that's just not something good to keep in mind. She needs a feather pen, four pieces of paper, and two living logs to craft this. If you're wondering why it takes living logs, y'all will see what I mean in a minute. Now I'm going to explain all the books that she has. The first book she has is Birds of the World, which allows her to spawn in a bunch of birds around her. If you combine this with the Sleepy Time Stories book, which I'll show y'all in a minute, it can put all the birds to sleep which then you can defeat them all. 
However, the player will become naughty, as the game refers it as, which then there are a bunch of enemies who will raid the screen as basically punishment for everything in this game, including killing a lot of innocent creatures like birds, rabbits, and butterflies. The next book she has is a plant-based book, which she can grow up to 10 plants in her garden, such as the garden I have down here with the um, one bit of corn that I have growing. Basically, this just grows them instantly. The next one, it allows you to grow things like grass and twigs and stuff like that, which I'll show you what I mean right now. Basically, if I have the book with me right now, if I pick all the grass and then use it, like if I pick up all the grass and pick it all off these plants, then reading the book, if I use it, then it'll regrow everything in the area. Basically, you can use this over and over again to get a bunch of grass and stuff. Now for the before-mentioned sleepy time stories. Y'all might have already guessed it from when I was doing my explanation of how you compare it with the Birds of the World book, but this one allows you to put enemies to sleep. It's kind of like a pan flute, but it's renewable. The book called On Tentacles allows you to spawn three tentacle enemies. However, these will attack you if you get close to them, so you have to keep an eye out for that. Basically, if you get a bunch of walls, flatten them out, and then use this book over and over again, you can spawn a bunch of tentacles in, which those will absolutely destroy the bosses, such as Bee Queen or Dragonfly. Alright, the next one is the Angler's Survival Guide. This one allows you to spawn a bunch of fish next to you, such as, there's some fish here. Alright, if y'all see the fish in the water, basically it spawns in one of those fish shoals right next to you. Basically, this one, I forgot the name, allows you to put out fires on screen. You need the end is an eye, a feather pencil, and two extra pieces of paper, because it's kind of like an upgraded book. If you read it and there are things on fire next to you, you can then put out all the fires. However, it will give you something called a fiery pen. If you throw it at enemies, it sets them on fire. It's kind of like an exclusive weapon that this character has. The book Overcoming Arachnophobia allows you to create a huge web next to your character, which slows down enemies, which is actually pretty helpful if you think about it. The Temperine Temperatures book allows you to get your character's temperature set to normal, so if your character's too hot or too cold, you can basically fix that with this book. This next book, I forgot the name, allows you to create a spotlight for like two minutes. If you read it in the caves, I'm pretty sure it causes an earthquake, so you have to keep that in mind. The next book, I forgot the name, basically just allows you to make it rain whenever you want to. The next one, which is kind of like the rain book, allows it to make it a lunar night. So if you're trying to wait for the full moon, now you don't have to. However, the crafting recipe for it takes an iridescent gem, which those are not easy to come by. Because there's only like two of them in the game, unless you want to build one yourself as Wilson. I mean, there's a whole quest you can do, but it's very long. The next one, I forgot the name once again. I don't know, these all have complicated names. But basically, this one allows you to spawn like a few grumble bees, which those are from a boss fight called Bee Queen, which basically now the player can use those bees to their own advantage. The Everything Encyclopedia allows the player to learn crafting recipes. It's not really needed for the librarian, however she can use it to assist other characters to help them learn things. The next one, this one in specific, is another book upgrade taking two pieces of paper. This one's for the plant book, so you need the actual plant book and a feather pencil to upgrade. Instead of it growing 10 crops, it actually grows 15, so it's kind of helpful, but you can decide whether or not you need it or not. The next one is, this one's for the light book, the one that created the spotlight. Basically just creates a bigger spotlight that I think lasts for like two days or something like that. All right, now, if y'all can see, I have a bunch of books in here, because I was playing around as this character a while back. Basically, what this allows you to do is, well, one, store your books in paper, but let's say you use the book, I'm gonna use the arachnophobia one, since it's like the least destructive one. I'm gonna read it really quick. Something to take mind of here is that the um, every book that you read makes your character lose a bit of sanity. I don't know if y'all can see it on screen, but just keep that in mind. Whenever you read books, it takes durability, because now it has 80 durability. This bookshelf, if you leave the books in there long enough, as y'all can see, it just got a little bit more of its durability back. These allow you to use your books infinitely, as long as you take them back before they break. I mean, other than that, I don't think there's anything to talk about this character.
A small side disadvantage I forgot to mention about this character is she won't eat spoiled food even if you're like de too desperate for it. Like if you're about to die of hunger in the game, she still won't eat it, so just keep that in mind. Of course, players won't, probably won't eat spoiled food on purpose, but I don't know, it's just something to mention. Alright, now for my use of this character, I like to use her, well, I don't use her too often, but I see a lot of other players using the On Tentacles book to defeat bosses like Dragonfly and Bee Queen real easy. And then sometimes they'll either play as her more, or they'll just drop out and play as another character like Wolfgang or somebody like that. She's almost like one of those drop-in, drop-out characters where you drop in into the game, play as her, upgrade the portal, and then switch to another character. But I mean, other than that, she is still pretty good. Now, once again, oh, the cobweb just went away, but basically, this character does not have a skill tree. So, now I'm just going to go over my ideas of a skill tree. Perhaps one of them could be the bookcase gets an upgrade, or maybe it could either hold more books, or even repair books faster. You know, that could be something. I wouldn't doubt if maybe, just maybe, they make some sort of upgrade for the books where they take less damage upon using them, but even yet I'm not too sure. But those are just some of my ideas. Another idea could be that she has a, like a bunch of new books, maybe for Lunar and Shadow Affinity, where it allows her to do more damage to Shadow and Lunar enemies. The only reason I say this, and this is more of a theory one than what I'm actually wanting, is because for Wolfgang and I think another character, oh yeah, Wigfred. Wigfred has battle songs, which I'll explain that in her thing, and Wolfgang, y'all already saw his video, his Lunar Affinity allows him to do more damage to the opposite enemy. Basically, I've been noticing that they've been doing like a lot of damage buffs for the other kind of enemy. Well, I mean, other than that, I don't think there's anything else I need to talk about this character. Well, anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video, so please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Goodbye.